this episode of My Cat's Tale, the star of the joy of cats, Mr. Tips. I heard tiny little meows, the runt of the litter, Mr. Tips. He only eats certain foods and he won't try new things. He's the star, a film critic, he's a director, he's a writer, and a game show host. He does it all. Joining us now on My Cat's Tale, we have another multimedia content unit producer. I think that's what the web wants to call the stuff that we do online nowadays. Judy joins us from the Joy of Cats. Hello, Judy. Hello. Back in my day, we just called this like radio, but playing around with it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's probably that's a similar idea for yourself. Let's start with right there, because I think that's where a lot of people will know your name from. The Joy of Cats and these regular quiz show reimaginings with cats yes mr tibbs he's the star as it were a film critic at one time he's a director he's a writer and a game show host he does it all tell us where this idea came from i was playing with writing and i wanted an audience i thought maybe i could write something with the cats that would be amusing just have fun with them. So I joined Twitter and it kind of took off because I, it took me a while to get going to engage with people because I'm kind of quiet and shy and don't really engage. But once I engaged with others and we started having a laugh, there was no stopping it. So Mr. Tibbs first started to do film reviews. People would put their films of their cats right the silly films and he would review them like they were serious drama movies and so it kind of took off from there and i started a, a a film festival for him mtiff mr tibbs international film festival i had i did that for a few years and then kind of petered out i i used to uh review all the entries that would come in and I gave a prize and the the Tibsy Award, and and after doing that a couple of years, I I kind of lost interest. And there wasn't that many entrants, so just started doing other things too with them. So, where did the urge for writing in you come from? Um, I don't know. I just I like to write. Well, I like to read, and you know, usually when a writer is reading, they go, I could do that. And so I just started to do it. And I was looking after my elderly mother at the time, so I wasn't working. So I had the time to do it. And so it just took off from there. It's challenging for me as a writer just to write that kind of stuff. And it's fun, you know, and, and to interact with, with the other people, cats, is hilarious sometimes and so we're going to come to mr tibbs now the yes. the titular host the of the of the, the mr tibbs international film festival for feline film yes. festival with all the apps <laughs> going on in there uh 99.95 percent of the time he's not an international multi multimedia star he's just a cat <laughs> it's just a cat <laughs> that that just is doing a lot of lifting there everybody by the way because there's no such thing as just a cat tell me about him mr tibbs he was actually well he's a big cat he's huge he's about 20 pounds except when he was born he was the runt of the litter he was tiny and once he started eating i i don't think he stopped but <laughs> he uh when minnie when i got minnie she was a, a totally an outside cat and feral and i managed to get her in the house and i thought i had the springtime till the springtime because i took her in about december november which in canada it's very cold in the winter and they say that feral's cat feral cats don't last longer than three years outside in canada and so i managed to get minnie in 
And I figured I had until the spring to get her fixed. March came around. She was pregnant. She had the kittens in my bedroom. She had four of them. First, she just had three. And I was looking. I was peeking and looking. And I saw them. And, and it's like, oh, they're so cute. And then I kind of went to bed. And it was after midnight, and I, I heard some struggling noises and tiny little mews. And so I looked, and there was this tiny little black cat, the runt of the litter, Mr. Tibbs. That was him. And you still have Minnie. Minnie's still living with you. Minnie's still living with me. The only one, Tuffy passed away in 2020. She, was, she wasn't well. I don't really know what was wrong with her. The vets didn't really know, and eventually she got too sick, and, and she passed. She had to be put down. But the first one of the kittens my sister took, Boots, and then I moved in with my sister, and so the family was reunited, and Boots, he's with the family all the time. He spends all the time with them up here with me. My sister has another cat. Dusty. Dusty does not like any of them. <laughs> he hisses at them. Doesn't like any of them. But Boots gets along with the others, except Mr. Tibbs does kind of chase him a bit. Mostly when it's around the food. When cats grow up together, they stay, we all hope they stay as a nice, relatively loosely connected unit. Mm-hmm. What was it like? Did, did Boots just fit back in with that group? Or was it almost like... A, bringing in a new cat to the group? Uh, No, he fit in perfectly. When he moved in with my sister, and my sister had the other cat, the other cat didn't like Boots, hissed at him all the time, and they never got along. When I brought the other cats in, Boots was right there. (laughs) And he was like, he. they don't groom each other, but they will all be lying on my bed, all of them, just lying there all having a good time well just doing nothing but they're more than happy being in each other's company except like i said tibbs does chase them away from the food well that's the star power isn't it i'm the star i should get into the food first i do the festivals all right so we got mimi there you have seen mr tibbs is seen there we've seen boots we've done oh patches patches is on the credits list as well Patches. Patches Patches has her own sort of following because she happens to be in love with Lord Graydon. And no matter what LG says, Patches is in love with him and she insists that they are an item. This is going down the roots of a telenovela now. Which one's (laughs) LG? Lord Graydon, he's just another cat on Twitter, That, but she's in love with him. Might it might be more for his title, but that's not the point. <laughs> so you have all these, these these cats; they all have their own personalities. How much of that do you reflect in the writing? Probably not a lot. I probably make up more than what they are because patches. I have her a bit of a nip team, and she likes the nip, but she's not nearly as crazy as I make her out to be. Uh, Mr. Tibbs, people think that he has a lot of treats and things because he's so big. And I've been in trouble before. People have been on Twitter saying, you know, don't feed him treats. It's so mad, cruel to feed him so many treats. And I really don't give him that many treats. I rarely, but I, I kind of portray him as loving treats. He absolutely loves them on Twitter, but to actually give him treats, he's kind of fussy. And he's kind of a fussy eater, too. <laughs> he only eats certain foods, and he won't try new things. So I, I, I kind of exaggerate things a bit, just for fun. What have you not exaggerated, then? What in the online personality does shine through? Well, actually, Tips is, is a really sweet cat. He doesn't do much. But he's very sweet. He he likes to sit on you, and you know about it when he's sitting on you. <laughs> but but he doesn't do a lot. And so I do portray him. Well, he's married now, 
he has a, he had a girlfriend and he's married now to Cleo and he's a bit of a flirt on Twitter, which he doesn't really, he's not a flirt. He doesn't really, he's not bothered by anybody, <laughs> any other cats. I, and actually he's really a, a fraidy cat. He's very scared of people, anything. So I kind of made that up about him being a flirt. But I, I, and he also gets insanely jealous with Cleo when she talks, that's his wife, when she talks to anybody. That's just another cat on Twitter that he met. Patches, Patches is actually my favorite cat. She's always there for me. You know, when you have a cat that if you're not doing great and you're just, you know, having a bad time and there's a cat that will come up and sit with you and purr next to you. That's Patches. She she does everything. I used to be, I used to have a stationary bike that I used to ride and I used to have to hold on to her and ride my bike every day. I had to help or she was helping me. I don't know which, but she was great. She's my favorite. Not that I have favorites. She's my favorite. <laughs> and what about Minnie? So what ages are they now? Minnie is 12. And the others are 11. So there's not a huge amount of difference from, so it must have been the first litter then. No, Minnie did have, actually she had a few litters the first year i think she was born so maybe minnie's 13 i think there's two years between them but minnie did have a, a few litters when she was outside all the time but i don't think any of those survived because she was outside all the time i didn't know really where they were or anything you know i mean lo- looking back now you, you said there earlier that you were thinking maybe three years for a feral coming in. Minnie's at 13 is, is really a, yeah. taken to the lifestyle of being a house cat. Yeah. Um, there was another cat that I was feeding outside the same year that Minnie was born. And that one for four years. And I think it only lasted four years because I was feeding that one every day. But it wouldn't let me touch it. I think it was, yeah, it was a girl cat. Because there was a kitten at one time, but she only lasted four years. And I, I reckon that Minnie would have been the same because they were the same, basically the same age. So Minnie's done really well being the, as old as she is right now. What is it about having so many cats around you that makes you feel comfortable? <laughs> I don't know that I... I planned it because <laughs> I certainly didn't plan it. But when Minnie had the, the kittens, I fully intended to rehome them. And then when my sister took boots, it was so hard to give up that kitten, even though it was going to my sister to a home where I knew it was going to be fine. It was so hard to give up that cat that I just, I couldn't give up the others. I just couldn't. But then I immediately got them all fixed so that it wasn't going to happen again. <laughs> so how do they all get on with each other just now? You said they're not really grooming, but they, they are still doing a bit of rough and tumble? Actually, well, Patches does beat up Tibbs often. Tibbs and Mimi at the moment are really, they, they groom each other a lot both of them to eat, you know, it, they, they can be licking each other simultaneously. And the other day, actually, I saw them, they were on the floor and they were head to head. And then I went downstairs and I came back upstairs and they had crossed paws. So they were like touching, holding hands. <laughs> it was cute. But yeah, they get along. Sometimes Tibbs will groom Patches. Patches doesn't really groom anybody but herself but the others will how much of a difference have they made to you they're great i never had any pets growing up as a kid my mom had 
cats, so she she didn't mind cats. And so when Tibbs was born, a little black cat, I called him Tibby. Plus, I thought he was a girl. Once I realized he was a boy, that's why I changed his name to Mr. Tibbs. But I named him Tibby after my mom's cat. Tuffy? She was black, but she had a, a white spot on her chest. So like a tuft of white, so I called her Tuffy. Patches, I didn't really want to call Patches Patches because Minnie had a sister named Patches and I loved that cat and that cat went missing. So I really didn't want to call Patches Patches, but my sister said, call her Patches. So I went, okay. Um, Boots was actually called uh, Tricky Woo at first. <laughs> my sister named him and then she changed his name to Boots. Don't ask, that's weird. And Minnie, Minnie was a mini version of her mother pretty which she was just a cat that followed me one day walking down the street the street and she followed me and and then she found the house because I kind of ran away from her I didn't want her following me but she came to the house and she kept coming to the house knocking on the door can Judy come out and play so I'd go out and play with her and then uh yeah, I just called her pretty, but when she had Minnie, which was pretty much, she was pretty much exactly the same as pretty, and that's why I named her Minnie. And we had to have this wonderful, wonderful sounding life offline, but they're gearing up for more online adventures over the next couple of months as well. Oh, there's always something going on. <laughs> I have to have something going on. Yeah, we've got the the game show, Match 3, that Mr. Tibbs does. That was because I, I decided to stop doing MTIF, the film festival, and I thought, well, what can I do? Because I've got to do something. And I, I just thought, I, it's based on a, a game show, a real game show that I used to watch when I was a lot younger. And I switched it around a bit and, you know, made it for cats so uh that's gonna i'll do that until there's no more contestants whenever that happens and then who knows what but i do have i've written another book i i wrote a book about um tibbs and cleo that's his wife now was his girlfriend at the time so this new book that i've written it i'm still in the process of writing it and i also have a movie that goes with it so i have to figure out how to make that available with the book i think i got it figured out but i'm not really sure so so i'll have the book out i'll have a movie and then i'm kind of thinking of another book too so that's just very early stages though but there's always that brain thinking. I know the creative spark. It's just like, yes, I need to do yes. something now. Let's just have a look around and see what there is. Yeah. Uh, and if people online are looking around, where can they find these books, watch these videos, get in, get involved as a contestant themselves? Uh, the best, best place is to go Twitter. And that's at Joy of Cats. And every Friday I put out a blog and I usually pin that to my Twitter page. So. And we will have a link back to your website uh, for Mr. Tibbs and the entire telenovela Canada cat. It's got to be a telenovela. You, we, we need some proper cat telenovela in there with LG and Chloe and everything else is going on. We will have a link back to whatever that is <laughs> in our website, which is mycatstailpod.com. Judy, Thanks very much for, well, first of all, bringing all the shows and everything to my attention. It's been great plowing through those. And then we've got a chance to once yep. more share that with more people and the story of yep. your, your cast of cats. Thank you very much. Thank you. You've been listening to My Cat's Tale, a Spence Media production. Listen to more tales of our perfect pets at mycatstalepod.com and support us on Patreon.